Have you ever loaded up Netflix and it just didn't work? No, seriously, when was the last time Netflix bugged out or just didn't work for you? I'm willing to bet probably never, right? Well, that's by design. You see, Netflix has a unique way to ensure their systems have a near 100% uptime. It takes a seemingly counterintuitive approach, but as it turns out, is extremely effective. I'm talking about chaos engineering. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how Netflix leverages chaos engineering to ensure millions of users worldwide have an uninterrupted streaming experience. But before we get into it, I'm trying something new for this video. So if you liked it or learned something new, then leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. All right, with that out of the way, let's jump into it. So what exactly is chaos engineering? Well, to put it simply, it's the practice of intentionally injecting faults into a system to test its resilience. The goal is to identify potential failure points and correct them before they cause an actual outage or other disruption. I know this sounds crazy, like why would you purposely want to inject faults into your system? But if you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. For example, take a look at military training. You don't just give a soldier a gun and tell him to go fight. You have to train them in scenarios that mimic real world scenarios. That's why soldiers undergo a variety of training to cover the most common combat scenarios they could be facing. And software is no different. There are a million and one ways a system could fail in a production setting. So when you look at things like this, chaos engineering starts to make a lot more sense. Now then that begs the question, how does Netflix use chaos engineering? Well, they have a suite of tools named the Simeon Army Suite. I know, sounds super chaotic already, right? In those suites of tools, there's one used to ensure fault tolerance in their systems, aptly called Chaos Monkey. If this conjures up an image of a monkey tearing up data center, then you're not far off. In fact, in a Netflix technology blog post, there's a quote saying, the name comes from the idea of unleashing a wild monkey with a weapon in your data center to randomly shoot down instances and chew through cables, all the while we continue serving our customers without interruption. This tool plays a crucial role in testing the fault tolerance of Netflix's production environment. By randomly terminating instances within the system, the Chaos Monkey simulates failures that can occur in real-world scenarios. Through this deliberate introduction of controlled chaos, Netflix engineers can gain valuable insights into potential weaknesses and vulnerabilities in the system, enabling them to proactively address any issues. And believe me, the Chaos Monkey touches everything. Everything from databases, applications, and services throughout all layers in their architecture is fair game to the monkey. And introducing failures in a live environment allows engineers to assess how gracefully their system handles any issues or disruptions. Chaos Monkey has worked so well for Netflix that it spawned various other monkey-themed tools, some of which are Latency Monkey, 1018 Monkey, Doctor Monkey, and even a big brother to the Chaos Monkey, the Chaos Gorilla. The Gorilla takes things a step further. Instead of randomly terminating an instance in the system, it terminates a whole regional server. So let's say Netflix's Amazon US West 2 server gets targeted by the Gorilla. The system should be able to safely rebalance to another region without impacting the end user. Netflix has been able to utilize Chaos Monkey with such success that they even have a GitHub repo allowing you to use the monkey within your project. But the real question is, can your project handle the monkey? All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, as this turned out to be a different style of video for me. I just thought the topic of Chaos Monkey was really interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys. That being said, if you have your eye on working at a company like Netflix, you first have to master the fundamentals like data structures. That's why I know you'll find this video helpful, where I talk about the top 10 data structures you need to know for coding interviews. So do me a favor and check that video out right now. In any case, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.